from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. This is D.C., and I'm Genevieve from Disney Junior's Choo Choo Soul. We are your hosts okay, all guys. day long. And now... Our next author, Tom Engelberger. Best-selling The Strange Case of Origami Yoda. Origami Yoda? Origami Yoda <laughs> was hailed as a delight by the New York Times and called the most original novel of the year by the Boston Globe. Oh, you have that one? And Darth Paper Strikes Back, an Origami Yoda book, is a hilarious and clever follow-up. Hit. So how many of you know how to do Origami Yoda? Well, let's learn more. Okay. Help us welcome Tom, Tom Engelberger. Engelberger. How are you? I'm glad to see you. This is the real star here. This is the real star here. This is Origami Yoda. If you guys, uh, you know what, you guys know what I'm talking about when I talk about Origami Yoda. You know what I'm saying? Larry, is this Larry over here? Larry, do you know what I'm talking about? It's uh, Origami. Everybody knows what Origami is. Is that right? Everybody, what? Origami? That's when you fold paper. Any kind of paper folding is Origami. Anytime you fold a piece of paper. And then, does everybody know what Yoda is? Who's Yoda? Everybody know who Yoda is? Who's Yoda? That's right, he's the, he's the short green guy from Star Wars. He's very wise, okay? He's a very wise individual. So, uh, and then does everybody know what pants are? When I talk about pants, does everybody know what pants are? Pants, pants are very important to the story I'm gonna tell you now. Pants, anybody know about pants? No one here knows about pants. No one here knows anything about pants. That could be a real holdup with the story. That could be a problem. We'll, we'll address the pants situation when we get to it. So, uh, so I wrote this book, it's called The Strange Case of Origami Yoda. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. Now the book, uh, the book stars this dude, it stars this dude named Dwight, all right? And now Dwight, Dwight's like the weirdest kid in the whole school, right? He's a little strange. Uh, I based him on myself. I know what it's like to be the weirdest kid in the whole school, so it's very natural for me to write a book about the weirdest kid in the whole school. But Dwight does something that I never did. Dwight folds a origami Yoda. He makes a Yoda out of a piece of green paper and he takes it to school. And that's fine that he first takes it to school, but the problem is he puts it on his finger and he walks around and he makes it talk to people. He walks up to people in the hallway with it and he sticks it right in their face and he says crazy stuff like, Cheetos for everyone you must buy. So. At first, everybody just thinks that this guy's even crazier than they thought. But then they start to realize the stuff that Yoda says is actually pretty smart. The stuff Origami Yoda says is almost as smart as the stuff the real Yoda says, the real Yoda in Star Wars. Now, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story to show you just how smart Origami Yoda is. And then you can make up your own mind, is Origami Yoda a hoax? Is Origami Yoda just uh, a trick that Dwight was playing? That's what this kid Harvey thinks. Or is Origami Yoda totally Jedi wise, like this kid thinks? This kid thinks that Origami Yoda is actually using the Force. Because he's been folded into the shape of Yoda, that he actually uses the Force just like Yoda from Star Wars. So I'm gonna tell you the story so you can decide for yourself. And that's what my main character is trying to do. This is my main character, Tommy, and Tommy's trying to figure out if Origami Yoda is for real or not. So Tommy makes this case file where all the different kids in school tell their stories about hap what happened with them and Yoda. And so that's the book, the book like Larry has right there. The book is all those stories put together. And the story I'm gonna tell you is the story that happened to Kellen, and it starts with Kellen's pants. Now I warned you guys, you needed to know about pants. Does everybody know, recognize these now? You know what I'm talking about with pants? Pants, are you familiar with pants? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody at all understand pants? All right, like three hands went up for pants. Now you'll notice that at the bottom of this, it says before. This is what Kellen's pants looked like before he walked into the bathroom, okay? This is what Kellen's look, pants looked like after he would have been in the bathroom. Now guys, don't panic. It's not actually pee. It only looks like pee. Kellen didn't actually pee in his pants. There was an incident involving some water on the sink. But is anybody gonna believe him if he walks out of the bathroom like this and he tries to tell them it's not pee? Nobody's gonna believe him. 
So he's stuck. He's trapped in the bathroom. He can't leave the bathroom with this on his pants. Does everybody understand why he can't leave with this on his pants? Why not, Larry? That's right, dude. It's going to be totally humiliating for him if he leaves the bathroom like that. Now, he's a little worried about what the boys in his class would say, but he's most worried about what Rondella is going to say. Now, Rondella, some people have told me this picture of Rondella looks a little goofy. But Kellen thinks, who's laughing at Rondella? Larry, are you laughing at Rondella? Uh, but Kellen thinks that Rondella is the most beautiful boy, uh, the most beautiful girl in the school. Now, boys, do you understand why you wouldn't want the most beautiful girl in the school to see you with the pee stain on your pants, even if it's not real pee? All right, so the other option that he's got is he could hide in the bathroom for a while. He could hide in the bathroom until the pee stain dries up, right? But the problem is he's only got 40 seconds until homeroom. And if he doesn't get to homeroom on time, he has to face Mr. Howell. You don't want to have to face Mr. Howell. You don't want to be late to Mr. Howell's class. You know why? Well, let me give you a little instructions on why you don't want to be late to Mr. Howell's class. Here's Mr. Howell, and here's Jabba the Hutt. Okay, there's Howell. There's Jabba. You getting that on the camera? There's Howell, and there's Jabba. Howell, Jabba. Howell, Jabba. Do you see the resemblance? You don't want to be late to Jabba the Hutt's class. He'd destroy you. All right, so... Kellen is now trapped. He's in a terrible situation. If he leaves the bathroom, he's humiliated. But if he doesn't leave the bathroom, he'll be destroyed by his evil teacher, Jabba the teacher. He thinks he's doomed. He thinks it's all over for him. But that's when, remember that dude Dwight? Remember Dwight, the guy who made Origami Yoda? Well, Dwight comes out of one of the bathroom stalls. And Kellen says, oh man, Dwight, I'm so glad to see you. Look at my pants. Do you have any ideas? And Dwight looks at the pants and he says, uh, yeah, I'm getting the idea that you peed in your pants. And Kellen's like, man, it's not pee. It's just water from the sink. I meant, do you have any ideas that are going to help me? And Dwight says, no, uh, I don't have any ideas, but Yoda does. All right, people, you've only got about 30 seconds left. You've got to make a decision. Are you going to go to class and get laughed at? Are you going to hide in the bathroom and get destroyed by your teacher? Or... Are you going to listen to a finger puppet? <laughs> Who's going to listen to Yoda? How many people out there are going to listen to Yoda? All right, how many people are going to take the advice of Yoda? I, I see a lot of hands, and that makes me happy, but I saw a few people that did not put their hands up. Who is not going to listen to Yoda? Oh, Larry. Larry, you? You're not going to listen to Yoda? Oh, man, you guys. Wow, that hurt. I, I wish I could say that didn't hurt, but that hurts. Well... I tell you what I'm going to do, I'll finish the story and you can decide for yourself whether Yoda's advice is good advice or not. Because here's Yoda's advice. Now listen carefully. It goes like this. All of pants you must wet. And Kellen says, was that supposed to sound like Yoda? Because it didn't sound anything like Yoda. All of pants you must wet. Hmm? And Kellen says, dude, what's he talking about? I'm running out of time here. All of pants, you must, would you shut up and tell me? What does Yoda want me to do? And Dwight says, okay, all right, just back off. Yoda says, Yoda says you should make all of your pants wet. So Kellen runs over to the sink. He runs over to the sink. Let's see, is there, what's happening here? He runs over to the sink. There's Yoda giving the advice. There he is. He says, all of pants, you must wet. So Kellen makes all of his pants wet like this. Now guys, it's still embarrassing. I'm not going to tell you that's not embarrassing. It's still embarrassing to walk down the hall like this. He splashes himself all over with water, so he's sort of camouflaged now though. So when he walks down the street, a hall like this, I, I admit people are going to think he's an idiot. But the important thing is they're not going to think he's an idiot that peed in his pants. All right, it's a crucial difference. It's going to inflect the rest of his middle school career. No one's going to think he peed in his pants. So he runs to class. He gets away with it. Rondella doesn't think he peed in his pants. Mr. Howe looks at him funny, but doesn't, send him, uh, doesn't destroy him. And that's when he realizes that he's totally 
Jedi wise. That's the story of Origami Yoda and the embarrassing stain. Now that you know how useful Origami Yoda is, how many of you want your own Origami Yoda to help you out? Origami Yoda will get you out of any problem you have. He'll help you at school, in the office, in the bathroom, wherever you've got a problem. Origami Yoda is going to be there to help you out. Is everybody ready to make their own Origami Yoda? Yeah. Now, does everybody have a piece of green paper? I don't have a piece of green paper. You want to let, can we find somebody cool? You found somebody cool? Is she funky enough? Is she funky enough? All right. So everybody has their paper? All right, come on up. Your name is Larry, is that right? Come on up here, Larry. Come on. All right, here we go. So now what's your name? Isabel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my good friend Isabel. How you doing, Isabel? It's great to see you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Isabel and I, Isabel and I, we've been working on this for a couple weeks, haven't we? We've been getting together every day after school and practicing this. Are you ready? All right. Isabel and I are going to fold the giant origami Yoda here. All right. Are you ready for this, Isabel? Can you handle it? Yeah. Isabel says she can handle it, folks. Let's see how we do. Now, before we start, before we start, I got to ask you a question. If there are any Star Wars fans here, was Yoda short or tall? Okay, Yoda's short, so keep your paper short. If you make your paper tall, you're gonna have a tall Yoda. Make sure to keep your paper short, okay? All right, is everybody ready for this? This could be a world record. If, we, if everybody folds it right, we could have a world record Origami Yoda day here today. This is gonna be awesome. Are you ready, Isabel? Isabel is gonna take her side and fold it over. Fold your side over, Isabel, a little farther. Perfect, just like we practiced. You've done it, Isabel. And she's gonna crease it down the side. Crease it down the side, Isabel. Excellent job, Isabel. So can you all do that? Can you fold one side of your paper over? Not the whole way, just part way over, and then crease it down the side. How's it going? Is everybody getting that? Is it looking good? All right, we've got one person out there who's following along. Everybody else got it too? Fantastic, all right. Now I'm gonna take my side, and I'm gonna fold it over. And I fold it over just like Isabel did, but I'm gonna make sure I fold it far enough over so that it overlaps a little bit. Notice the way my paper and Isabel's paper overlap a little bit. Very important that you have the overlap. If you don't have the overlap, you might end up with a skimpy Yoda. Nobody wants a skimpy Yoda. Do you want a skimpy Yoda? No one wants a skimpy Yoda. Let's scoot over this way a little bit, Isabel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, are you satisfied with this? Are you ready to draw a picture on it and go home satisfied that this looks like Yoda? What do we need to make it look more like Yoda? Thank you, Larry. Very good job. All right, Larry over there says we need some ears. Isabel is going to take her corner here. Take this corner, Isabel. Pull it way over to the side. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Pull a little farther. Pull a little farther. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. There we go. All right, hold on. Hey, Isabel, let's switch places real quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to try again. Here we go. We're going to take this corner. We're going to pull, 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 pull all the way over to the side and then squash it down flat like that. You see what we did there? We just pulled it over to the side, squashed it down, and now we have one triangle sticking out from the side of our rectangle. Does everybody have that? How did that work out for you? Is it good? All right, now Isabel's gonna fold the next one. Let's hold it up, Isabel. Now you're gonna take this corner here. You gotta find that other corner that's hanging out up there. Pull it over, keep pulling, keep pulling. A little farther, okay. You're gonna pull that corner, just the corner towards you. There you go, you got it, she's got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Isabel has done it. Isabel's got it. You've done a fantastic job, Isabel. Are you ready for the final fold? Isabel says she's ready for the final fold. Are you ready for the final fold? Yeah. All right, here we go. The last fold. You should now have something that looks like a sports coat. With just one fold, we're going to turn it into Origami Yoda. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Isabel, we're, help me out here. We're going to put our hands right here to make a line through the ears. We're going to fold the top down. Fold the top down. We got it, Isabel. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. Origami Yoda, here he is in person. Just like in the book, it's going to work like a finger puppet. Isabel's now going to demonstrate how to use it as a finger puppet. Are you ready, Isabel? Are you funky? OK, here we go. Isabel, it's time to get funky. There she is, Origami Yoda. Dance, dance, Yoda, dance. <laughs> Isabel, you've done a fantastic job. A big hand for Isabel, please. You've done a great job. Good job, Isabel. Nice folding. All right. Isabel, that was incredible. Guys, I've had a great time talking to you. Before I go, I just wanted to introduce you to one other person, not Yoda. Unfortunately, the story has a happy ending, 
but something bad happens at the end of the story. This character, Harvey, the guy that never believed in origami Yoda, he goes home over the summer and he folds his own origami, but it's not Yoda, it's Darth Vader. And he calls it Darth Paper. And so the next book, Darth Paper strikes back and he comes back to the school with only one mission, to destroy origami Yoda. Guys, I've had a great time talking to you, thanks a lot. Everybody, hold up your Yodas for me to see. Can you hold up your Yodas? We want to see them. Can you hold up all the Yodas? Wow. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Guys, give it up guys. again. Thanks Thank a lot. you so much. Thanks, guys. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.